the Warriors are the champs, but are they ready to run it back? We'll tell you who says, oh, yeah, they are. Speaking of the Warriors, can I interest you in Golden State, Memphis Grizzlies. Christmas Day, Dre and Ja yeah. both on board for that one. Yeah, you can, Ja. And a fourth <laughs> ring for Steph. What does it do for LeBron's GOAT status? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. Nick, the Count the Rings crowd coming for you and LeBron yet again, it seems like. Uh, I'm not certain. I'm going to have to check my sports almanac. Does, is LeBron's case helped or hurt more by Steph's ring or by Max Verstappen continuing to dominate F1? I'm not sure because they're both just about as related. But we'll discuss. We'll discuss. Ah. It's been too long since we discussed LeBron. Today, we'll get him back in the show. We are just days into the NBA offseason. Warriors still probably sleepless and celebratory after winning their fourth title in eight years. Busy little buggers. But now that the dust is settling on the season, we can talk about the offseason and legacy. Namely, does this title now change things for Golden State, for Curry, for Durant? One Twitter user thought so, tweeted this, Kevin Durant's legacy just died. He's now just the guy between Harrison Barnes and Andrew Wiggins, the guy who left the Beatles. Well, to the surprise of literally nobody, KD responded saying, I've been dead since July 4th, 2016, but congrats to the Dubs. That date, of course, being the day KD signed with the Golden State Warriors. Nick, does KD's legacy take a hit with this latest Warriors title? Well, I want to be totally fair here. And I'm going to do this a few times in today's show, but let's just do a thought exercise. If before the playoffs, we had said, okay, just map out best case, worst case for a few NBA superstars, what would the worst case have been for Durant? Well, hmm. he gets swept in round one and has his worst playoff series <laughs> ever. Check. Okay, now that he's done, how could it get worse? The Warriors win a title without him? Yeah, okay, check. And what about the team that beat him if other superstars play that team and equip themselves quite nicely? Like Giannis plays him and averages 35. And Jimmy Butler plays him and has some of the best playoff games of his life. And then Steph Curry plays him and wins finals MVP. You'd be like, oh boy, that's a far-fetched scenario. But yeah, that would be the worst case scenario. And that is exactly what happened. So in that regard, it did not exactly go swimmingly for Kevin Durant. However, since I said I want to be fair, let's also discuss why this must be so maddeningly frustrating for, for Durant, Brew. For, in one way, because there is a randomness that he has no control over. Going into the year, two, star, or two starting players on two championship contenders. Ooh, are they even going to be allowed to play due to their vaccine status? One plays with Steph Curry, one plays with Kevin Durant. The one that plays with Kevin Durant didn't get vaccinated. The one who plays with Steph Curry did and then played a key role in the finals. KD's got nothing to do with that. And the other part of this is, and this to me rears its head with all of these KD legacy discussions is, we in the media must be fair and honest, Brew, and admit this. When Durant was in Golden State winning titles, we all said almost unanimously, not totally, but almost unanimously wild, that, hey, guess what? If KD wants a real legacy, he's got to leave. And then he left, and we're like, oh, you Sorry. idiot. Thank you. You ruined it all. Thank you. So, the, so I, I do think it is true these playoffs went as, as bad as they could have gone for him. I also think if I'm KD, I'm like, I'm sitting there. Maybe smoking, playing some video games, get a Twitter alert. And I'm like, God dog it. Maybe. This again. What do you people want from me? And so, in that regard, I, I, I no empathize maybe. with the man. Oh, no, okay. maybe. First of all, let me take care of some, some business up front. First of all, Nick, your Sharpie tie game today. Oh, my goodness. This, that's an oh, all-timer. That point. is an all-timer. I mean, fantastic job. Thanks. Second of all, about thank the you. tweet that oh, KD God. is responding to, being the guy who left the Beatles is comparing KD to John Lennon. So, yeah, you know what? Okay, if that's the comparison you want to make. You should have shut that down right away. Like, oh, I'm John Lennon? Okay. Best songwriter of all time? Like, Meh, not bad. I guess I am. But here's, where, here's the thought exercise I'll give to you, bro. We just lay out 
the rules if we want to criticize KD and have his legacy go backwards. A phenomenal player, we'll call him player A. Player A is a phenomenal player. He, just everybody agrees. He joins a championship team and brings that championship team to new heights. Even though that championship team has a player, player B we'll call him, who is already established and already a star on his own. Then player A leaves, that would be Kevin Durant leaves, and player B continues to succeed. Is player A, Durant, all of a sudden his legacy has to take a step back? Because if those are the rules, the scenario that I laid out is exactly what happened to Randy Moss and Tom Brady. Randy Moss showed up to the Patriots. The Patriots are already good. He brought the Patriots to a new level that is no one has ever seen in the history of the league with Tom Brady as his teammate. Great. Randy Moss leaves. Tom Brady continues to be great. And no one on God's green earth is like, oh, Tom Brady won again. Randy Moss legacy goes down a notch. Look at that. He just, it, that's not how it works. KD's is still phenomenal. Everybody knows it. Is yeah. his team as good as Golden State? Obviously not. Is the organization run as, you know, perfectly as Golden State? No. Is he still a phenomenal player with two finals MVPs trophies last time I checked? Yes. I don't think his legacy moved one iota just because Jason Tatum had 100 <clears throat> turnovers. All right. Literally wow. 100. You said a I lot. Mean, I, I, I like the player A, player B thing. I didn't like the Tom Brady, Randy Moss thing because Moss is a receiver. You, you, that's not comparable to KD and Golden State in basketball where one player can make such a big difference. But the player A, player a B thing sure. was okay. And, and look, sure. there is not a person on earth who's ever watched a basketball game who wouldn't say Kevin Durant is phenomenal. So that's not the discussion. Charles Barkley criticized him recently or, or you know, talked about recently how he needs to win his own ring to really get that respect. Okay, so kind of saying he, he doesn't really have the respect yet. Barkley wouldn't deny that he's a phenomenal individual player. Walt Frazier said a few years ago, there's an asterisk by those rings he won in Golden State. Clyde wouldn't say Durant's not a phenomenal player, so that's a given. We understand that. But here's the deal. To answer Jenna's question, yes, it did impact his legacy negatively. And here's just the facts. What is the biggest discussion in basketball right now? Is Steph Curry top 10 all time? Are we having that discussion about Durant? No. No. Are we, no very few people think Kevin Durant is top 10 all time. There's a couple out there. But in the national media, the people leading the discussion, it's is Steph top 10. Nobody's talking about KD being top 10. Now, a year ago, okay. Wilds, most people had KD ahead of Steph. Not everybody. I think, Nick, right. I think you, Nick, you had Steph ahead of KD. But most people would have had KD ahead of Steph. Obviously, right now, the tables have turned. So at the very least, he has moved down a notch, and a guy that was behind him has leapfrogged him. That's the, so to answer the question literally, yes, it's hurt his legacy a bit. And as Barkley suggested, the way to kind of make up those points, if you will, Nick, is to go out and do it in Brooklyn. Well, I Absolutely, that's true. And listen, I, all these folks, man, the top 10 is about to become, when you make a reservation for eight and 13 people show up and the restaurant's like, we can't see them. Ah. Because guess what? Anybody, nobody, I, I didn't see a single person's top 10 that actually had the guts like Broussard did to put it out in, in writing. Now, there's the downside to having the guts like Broussard did is you make a grievous error like leaving Wilt Chamberlain off it and it tarnishes you forever. <laughs> but at least he had the guts to do it. Uh, guess what? Not a single person had Giannis on there. And does anyone think Giannis isn't getting on there? Well, somebody's got to go then. And if Durant gets an, another ring and gets one on his own, then he's going to have at least an argument there. But yes, they, when guys, when, when, when we are watching living legends, here's the thing about legacy. Legacy, I don't know the etymology of it, but I assume legacy, legend, they're all around similar, you know, from the same genesis, right? We are watching living legends. So they are writing their legacy in real time. So you have three of the 20 greatest players of all time 
right now still around the peak of their powers. And they're all around the same spot in the rankings. No one has them in the top five. No one has them outside of the top 20. In Steph, KD, and Giannis. And it can be a, it can be like a, a Joker, Nadal, Federer, horse race type of thing of, well, who's the best of the three? I don't know what's happened in the last 12 months. Be a, like those things right. can happen. And so sure. I don't think it's fair to act like Katie's legacy is ruined because he's still writing it. And if he right. never plays again, he's one of the he's greatest players time. ever. But it's also disingenuous to act like the last 10 weeks, if, if Kevin Durant was a stock, the last 10 weeks, it's like, oh, hadn't gone great. Well, Steph Curry's stock is at a near all-time high. It's like, wow, it's trading at 2016 volumes. Like, those things happen, right. and that's a fair telling of it, in my, in my opinion, bro. And, and look, let's not sugarcoat it either. This Golden State winning this championship, Wilds, justifies the criticism of those who criticize KD for going to Golden State in the first place. What was the argument? They don't need you. You're taking the easy way out. When they oh. win a ring <laughs> after you, it looks like they didn't need you. I mean, that's just let's just keep it real. It, that, mean, there's well, no except, denying. Yeah. I know they needed him. He was great. But it looks like they didn't need him because they won without you, after you. So that, that is real. Let's not sugarcoat it. 